Good afternoon, this is Pastor Edward Sentongo. You're welcome uh, to our Bible study session today. Uh, today is Friday, our last day of the week, and uh, uh, we're going to be studying a scripture today uh, that um, continues on our study yesterday, uh, in which we studied um, about seeking the things uh, of heaven uh, rather than the things in the world. Today we're going to look at, look at um, scripture in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, uh, starting from 19 up to around uh, 24. It talks about seeking the treasures in heaven, laying up your treasures in heaven, and not on this earth. Praise God. So I'm going to uh, study a lot of other scripture that is um, related to that. And today we're going to take more time praying. Uh, so this is just a continuation of yesterday laying up your treasures in heaven rather than on the earth praise god we looked at colossians chapter 3 yesterday and uh, a lot of other scripture on how best we can walk as born again believers uh, not in the flesh but under the power and anointing of the holy spirit and the leadership of the holy spirit now we recognize that there's a lot of struggles in the world some of them financial uh, a lot of phones in the world that keep us from uh, being focused on the things of god and the things in heaven uh, but um, I'm here to tell you, brother, sister, to strengthen you. Even as I strengthen myself, I strengthen myself in the word. <laughs> Praise God. Because the world has gone awry. It's, it's so many things that are going on. Um, uh, you know, sexual sin and unrighteousness. That's just a part of it. But there's so many other things. People killing one another. People hating one another. And, and so many things that are going on. But uh, I'm here to strengthen you that if you lay up your treasures in heaven, uh, you and I will be able to overcome and we will wear that crown of glory that Jesus Christ promised for those that win in this world. When we become born again, and if you are not yet born again, please become born again. What it means is that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You believe in him, in the Son of a living God who died for against our sins in your heart and you confess with your mouth that he is your Lord and Savior. Praise God. And you're born of water and spirit. That's what it means to be born again you're given the gift of the spirit of god you 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 you, you your spirit man or spirit uh, person so to speak uh, for we are spiritual beings in a human body is renewed is uh, uh, renewed is reborn praise the son of a living god uh, we understood that uh, when we were created when we came from heaven we were pure we were pure uh, we were formed in our mother's wombs but before we were formed in our mother's wombs God saw each and every one of us and sent here, sent us here for a special purpose, a specific purpose. Praise God. And that purpose is written in a, a book uh, in heaven um, for some to be pastors, teachers of the word, apostles, prophets of God. So your purpose has already been written in the book. And now it is up to you to become born again. Once you become born again, that purpose is activated. But what I was going to say is that when we are born in our mother's wombs, we are born in sin in sin because of what and not because of our mothers and yes sometimes it's because of our mothers but even our mothers and fathers uh, who are born in sin were born not because of their own doing but because of the original sin which is from adam and even yes they may have done their own sins we all have our own responsibility for the actions and the things we do the things we say and, and some of them are sinful uh, in this sinful and perverse generation but we have hope in Christ, and that's why Christ died on the cross. The second Adam, as Paul says, who is a life-giving spirit, praise the Son of the living God, who died on the cross for each and every one of us, was uh, 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 buried. He rose from the dead. He rose from the dead by the power of the Spirit of the living God. And the same Spirit that rose him from the dead is the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, that we receive as a gift to enable us to overcome the trials and tribul uh, tribulations, the temptations of this world. When we believe in him, it says in John 7, verse 38 to 39, powerful scripture, whoever believes in him, out of our innermost heart or innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And he explains in 39, John 7, 39, that the rivers of living water is the Holy Spirit, a person, the person of God, the third person of God. Uh, well, for those of you uh, who don't know about the Trinity, the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father sent his Son. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have 
eternal life. And so after you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you then receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is talked of and said that I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but I'll leave you a comforter, a counselor, and that comfort and counselor is the Holy Spirit of God who helps us walk in this world and overcome the trials and tribulations, the temptations, the, the persecutions, the, the, the everything that is in the world, because the world is already uh, messed up. I have to say that. And you need the Holy Spirit in order to overcome this evil and perverse generation. And that gift, the gift of the Son of the living God dying on the cross, the price that he paid on the cross by the blood, by his blood, gives us healing. It is freely given without any, you don't have to pay for it, you don't have to work for it. Freely given. All you have to do is accept your, Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you will receive that gift of salvation in Christ. Praise the Son of the living God. And so, John 7, verse, verse 38 uh, to 39, he says that whoever believes in him, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of the living water. Rivers of living water being the spirit of the living God who helps us overcome the trials of temptations, who brings healing, who brings provision, who gives us the power to overcome, who actually uses us in mighty ways, even as he's using me right now, to speak to others that they may become born again. Also, bring healing to others. Some people have an anointing of healing, an anointing of uh, discernment of spirits, an anointing, there's a different anointing, an anointing of teaching of the word. I do have that anointing, and I thank God for it. It's a gift. It is nothing that I had to work for, but the Holy Spirit has been revealing scripture to me. And then, yes, the enemy continues to fight because that's how the enemy fights. He fights in scripture, right in scripture. Because of the so many false doctrines that have been taught over the time, sometimes you may have heard something that is incorrect, and then the Holy Spirit, who points to the truth, to Jesus Christ himself, is who corrects us and helps us align with the Word of God, I'm pointing not to his own authority, and that's the Holy Spirit, but to Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. Praise the Son of a living God, who gave us the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Now, the Holy Spirit is, is an authority in himself, but he doesn't speak of himself. He, he is an authority. He doesn't speak of himself. Anytime you hear a spirit speaking of itself and not pointing to Jesus Christ, just know that that is the Antichrist. Praise the Son of a living God. That's what First John chapter 4 talks about. It talks about those that are of God. Praise God. How you detest this, how you test the spirit. You test the spirits. Uh, by what they confess and the spirits, I, as I taught on that in that uh, scripture, the spirits that he's talking about is not testing the spirits of uh, 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 the, the demonic spirits. And yes, we understand demonic spirits influence our thinking, but what he was talking about is that how do you know a spirit that is of God? A spirit that is of God, in other words, your spirit that is connected to the spirit of God when you become born again, is how you confess. Do you confess that Jesus Christ died in the flesh? then that is the Spirit of God. Praise God. A Spirit that is connected to the Spirit of God, that is born again. It is this that he was speaking of, false prophets. There will be so many false prophets in the last days, so many antichrists who teach false doctrines, themselves uh, being uh, uh, influenced by demonic forces of darkness, principalities and power, Satan himself, who is behind the coming of the antichrist. And Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse, uh, uh, I think I believe verse 4, and, and verse, uh, uh, verse, verse 4 all the way up to around 11. Praise God. Now, we're going to study Matthew chapter 6. Praise God. So if you are not yet born again, please become born again. Unless you're born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That is the scripture. That is the word of God. And it is true. You must be born again in order to see the kingdom of heaven, in order to be a, a part of the, 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 the royal priesthood, the holy nation, the chosen generation, even the Jews. I have so many Jewish friends, I have Muslim friends, I have so many friends who are from different faiths, but I'm here to tell you that friend, family, everybody that is listening, Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth and the life. No other, no other. Praise the Son of living on that. If you lay up your treasures in heaven, you are assured of eternal life in Christ. Praise God. For the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. Only the wages of sin is death. So we must stay away from sin, but the good news, the, 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 the grace of God is that those sins, he who was sinless, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, took on our sins that we may be sinless. The Lamb of God that was unblemished, never heard any sin, overcame sin, praise God. 
had to be sacrificed that we may see salvation, that we who are sinners may be forgiven and be washed in the blood of Jesus and have salvation through the blood of Jesus. Praise the Son of the living God. The word of God in Revelation 12, 11 proclaims, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives until death. The testimony being that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. And the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Praise the Son of the living God. Revelation 19, verse 10. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So anytime you see somebody calling themselves a prophet and they're prophesying and they're prophesying in a different name other than the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that is a false prophet. So there you have it. It is those that he was talking about, the Antichrist. The Antichrist that will come in the form of uh, 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 masquerading as angels of light, but inside darkness itself, Satan himself masquerading. Praise God. And so we must watch out. We must watch out for those demonic forces of darkness. We must watch out for the lying spirits. We must watch out for the false prophets, false teachers, teaching false doctrines. Praise the Son of the living God. We must stand firm on the word of the Lord and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. No other. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is the only way, the truth, and the life. And I'm going to repeat that. There is no other way. Praise the Son of the living God. He is uh, the only way, the truth, and the life that gets us to heaven. Praise the Son of the living God. And so in Matthew 6, uh, verse 19 to um, all the way up to 24, and we're going to share some other scripture. Praise God, and, and understand uh, um, what we are supposed to do as born again believers. Yes, you are here. You are born again believer. You've received the gift of the Holy Spirit, and yes, Romans eight fourteen proclaims that those that are led by the Spirit of the Living God are the children of God. But how do you listen to the voice of God? How do you understand that it is the Spirit of God? There's so many things this Bible teaches us how we are to hear the true voice of God. And yes, the devil can misinterpret the Bible and try to confuse us here and there. But if you have the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will point to the truth. In fact, in one of the scriptures, it's called, it's called the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth pointing to Jesus Christ, the only way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Son of the living God. Praise the Son of the living God. So we are going to pray before we start our uh, teaching today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and eternal mercies. Lord, I want to glorify your name. I thank you for your loving kindness and eternal mercies. I come before your mercy seat, Lord, and ask you for the forgiveness of my sins. Anything I've said or done or thought that has not glorified your name, Lord, forgive me and purify me. Cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. Same with everybody that is listening. I pray that you forgive each and every one of us. There's so many things that are going on in the world. There's so many sexual immorality, perversion. There's a lot of things killing one another, hatred for one another, racism. There's so many things. People committing abortion, and some of them don't know that that is a sin, but yet that is a sin. Homosexuality, uh, lesbianism, transgender, people that deny how you created them. Lord, my God, people that are committing bestiality, Lord, my God, all those things are happening in Hollywood, in, in the entertainment industry, on the, in, on the internet. So many things going on that are perverse, for we live in a perverse and evil generation. But yet you've called us, according to your word in Ephesians 5, 16 to 18, speaking through your servant Paul, you say, Lord, the times are evil, redeeming our time. Now let us redeem our time for the times are evil. Let us not be fools, but be wise. Praise the Son of the living God. Be not filled with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you say, Lord. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for your servant, Paul. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that used him to speak those words into us. It is in this very moment that we pray that you power out your spirit upon each and every one of us, as you promised in Acts 2.17, that in the last days, Lord, you're going to power out your spirit upon all flesh. Our daughters and sons shall prophesy. A young man shall have visions. Men shall have dreams. Even men and women shall prophesy. It is this time, and I believe that there is going to be a mighty move of God, a mighty move of the spirit of the living God to bring deliverance to each and every one of us. Purity of heart, Lord. You say, blessed are those with a pure heart, for they shall see God. It is your word that purifies our hearts. Lord, you come in by for a holy and unblemished church. I pray that you purify each and every one of our hearts. Mine inclusive, Lord, that we may be able to see the face of God. For without holiness, none shall see God. I thank you, Lord, that our prayer has been listened to and it is already answered. In faith, we believe. For we walk by faith, not by sight. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you abundantly for um, uh, listening in, tuning in. And so, 
Matthew 6 verse 19 begins to um, speak about these treasures in heaven. Uh, treasures in heaven, which uh, uh, in Revelation 3 verse 18, Jesus Christ tells us, praise God, to see gold that has been tested by fire from him. Now that gold doesn't come from the world and this other gold that you go and buy. And even though God created the gold in the world, but the gold in heaven is greater than any gold on earth. Look at this ring. I have a gold ring I have, and I love it, I love it. But the gold in heaven is greater than these little golds that we have. Praise God. It is this that he spoke of in Malachi 3.3. 3. Praise the Son of a living God. That he sits like a refiner. So the goal that is asking us to, to seek from him. Praise God. In fact, let us go to um, Revelation 3 verse 8 first. Praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Son of a living God. Oh, Shandra Babasakaya. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Alpha and Omega. Revelation 3, verse 18, I was speaking to the church. It was a lukewarm church, the church of the Laodiceans. And this he spoke. Because you say, I am rich, in verse 17, I, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Think about it for a minute. Now, this church and the people in this church claimed that they were rich. In other words, that they were wealthy because of the wealth of the of the world. And they, they, they had all these things, cars and houses and the gold of this world. They had money in stocks. I'm talking about not these people, but I'm talking about you today who thinks that, oh, you got the wealth today. So this scripture is speaking to us today. Praise God. Same thing. They, they say, because you say, I am rich. This is Jesus Christ speaking to the church in Laodicea. And he speaks to us today because the word of God is living. It is sharper like than, than any double-edged sword. Sharper than any double-edged sword. Separating soul from spirit, born from our thoughts, from intents of the heart. And so if it is you, this is speaking to you. And you ought to understand what the spirit of the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us today. He says, because you say, I am rich, I become wealthy, have need of nothing. Praise God. And there's so many people out there who have amassed wealth. They have billions and billions of dollars. But God is saying that if you do not have Jesus Christ, if you do not have the gold that is from him, praise the son of living God. And that is Jesus Christ, the son of living God. You are wretched and poor. This is what he says. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Praise the Son of the living God. And he says in verse 18, this is where I wanted us to concentrate. I counsel you to buy from me gold. This is the counsel of the Son of the living God. He counsels each and every one of us to buy from him gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, white garments that we may be clothed. Praise the Son of the living God. And those white garments we know come from Him, the only one, the, the only way, the truth and the life. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the very last, who purifies each and every one of us, who purifies us with His white garments because of the price that He paid on the cross. Hallelujah, somebody. By His blood, He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought peace was upon Him. By His stripes, we are all healed. Praise the Son of the living God. So he says here, to seek white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And we have been naked so many times. How many times have you, you, have you walked in and, and you have been beaten up with sickness and disease? You've been beaten up with uh, the shame of lying, the shame of, uh, of, of stealing, the shame. And these are shameful things. Think about it for a minute. And people may glorify thieves and say, oh, he stole money and he's rich and he's a hero. He's not a hero. He's a hero in the world. But in the eyes of God, you are so naked and ashamed. Praise the son of living God. When you have an evil thought, even an evil thought of promiscuity in your heart, that is nakedness. And it is this that Christ is speaking of and saying, seek white garments, you and I, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. It may be promiscuity, it may be stealing, it may be lying. It, it, little, little, little idols that we spoke of yesterday in our hearts. It starts from the heart, praise God. Before someone uh, pro, uh, is promiscuous, because before someone uh, uh, sleeps with somebody else, and that is just sexual immorality, but the other things, before someone kills, before someone lies, that lie is formed in the heart. In fact, I think I might have shared on this, uh, before it is the same thing when someone who has killed is taken in court 
praise the Son of Living God, they, 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 they have to analyze if there was a premeditated murder. Did he think about it? Did he form it? Or was it a mindset, a mad person? And yes, a mad person may, may, may be uh, forgiven because they are of insane mind. But a sane person, praise God, can kill, can kill through premeditation, premeditated matter. And so in the same way, a sin is first formed in the heart. You meditate on it in the mind. The, the enemy is from the enemy. No doubt about it. It's from the enemy. Because every sin is the root of all sin is from that old serpent called the devil who came to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord came to give us life, give, give it to us more abundantly. And so you meditate on this sin in your heart. And once it is meditated on, in the eyes of God, that is already sin. And so... That is why Jesus Christ died on the cross, that our hearts, the, 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 the word may be written on the tablets of our hearts, from the tablets of stone to the tablets of our hearts. The Spirit of God himself convicting us and showing us and teaching us and purifying, purifying us, burning everything that is not of God inside of us so that we may be holy, so that when he returns, we are as holy as he is. Praise the Son of a living God. So he says here, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve. Eyes with eye salve, meaning that the Spirit of God, let the Spirit of God open our spiritual eyes, even as Paul, formerly Saul of Tarsus, who was persecuting the church, praise the Son of a living God, for so many years persecuting Jesus' church, persecuting Jesus himself. Every time you persecute the church, you're persecuting Jesus Christ himself. Whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. Praise God. And so here Paul, formerly, rather Saul of Tarsus, praise God, is Paul, formerly Saul of Tarsus, was persecuting the church. And he did not know it until he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And his eyes were blinded by the light. Think about it for a minute. Blinded by the light. That now, three days later, Ananias, a man of God, sent and his eyes are open. Eyes are opened now, closed technically to the things of the world, and opened after three days, praise the Son of Living God, to the things of the Spirit. Praise God. Now, the light blinded him, it blinded him to the things of the world. That's what happened. When you receive Christ, when you receive the light of God, Praise the Son of Living God. You become dead to sin and alive in Christ. You become you the fleshly desires. They die. Everything that is in the world to you looks like it is darkness. Praise God. I'm talking about sin and unrighteousness. There's a lot of good in the world. There's a lot of good in the world. There's a lot of good people in the world. So don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about you viewing the world in the worldliness that the world is. In other words, you're viewing things in the natural rather than in the spiritual. Praise the Son of the living God. And so you begin to understand then that this eye salve that Jesus Christ is asking us to put on our eyes is to open our spiritual eyes. Even as Paul, a formerly of Saul of Tarsus, his eyes were opened three days later by Ananias and he began to see things in the realm of the spirit. Praise the Son of the living God. I'm hoping that somebody has got that revelation. And so Christ here says, anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see now, gold, he's taught us to see gold that has been tested by fire. And I'm, I want to take you to the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, a great prophet of God, a great prophet of God that, um, that uh, God used in many ways to prophesy of the coming of the Messiah, praise the Son of the living God. And in, in Malachi 3.3, 3, God reveals himself as the, the refiner who gets us through that fire, praise God, just as the refiner sheets. Praise the Son of Living God and refines that gold, these rings and, and the, the, the silver and the diamonds, and they go through fire. But when they come out, they're shining with the righteousness of God. And that's what Christ dies, that does, does for us. When he died on the cross, praise the Son of Living God, and rose from the dead, that's what he did for us. That whoever receives him, praise the Son of the Living God, you are purified. You receive the righteousness of God through Christ. And throughout your life here on earth, you are to submit to Christ and become dead to sin. Praise the Son of the Living God. Dead to sin and alive in Christ. Continuously, you crucify the flesh. I think we studied recently about carrying your own cross. And I'm hoping somebody's got the revelation. But open your Bibles with me, if you will, please. In Malachi, the book of Malachi 3.3. Malachi 3.3, this is what it says. 
Praise the Son of Living God. And this was speaking of the messenger that God was going to send, John the Baptist, before the coming of the Lord. Praise the Son. I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Praise the Son of Living God. Hallelujah, somebody. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. The Father in heaven was sending his only begotten Son for each and every one of us. For he so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. But listen to this. He sent a messenger first. Now, messenger, as we understood in the book of, in the book of John and elsewhere in the, in the Gospels, it was John the Baptist who was going to prepare the way for the kingdom. The way for the kingdom. Praise, oh, shut up. In fact, one of the words he says, prepare the way for the kingdom. Praise the son of a living God. Hallelujah, somebody. And so he prepared the way for the kingdom. And when Christ came, he says, the kingdom of God is here. Praise the son of the living God. But listen to these words. In verse 2, he says, but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. He is like a refiner's fire. He says, see gold that has been tested by fire, Revelation 3.18. And here he tells us, for he is like a refiner's fire. As a matter of fact, Hebrews 12, verse 29, the word of God this, uh, says, he is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. In Jeremiah 23, 29, God says, is in my word like fire? Is in my word like a hammer that crushes rocks and two pieces? Praise the son of the living God. So we know then that his word is a purifying fire. In the day of the, on the day of Pentecost, the tongues of fire touched the, 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 the disciples and they were filled with the tongues of fire. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. That's who we receive, praise the Son of living God, through the tongues of fire from God himself, purifying us, purifying our hearts, burning everything that is not of God. Praise the Son of living God. The word of God itself is the sword of the Spirit. Praise the Son of a living God. And so you begin to understand that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are one. And we, the Father, praise the Son of a living God. But listen to this. It says, for he is like a refiner's fire, verse 2, and like laundress soap. Laundress soap meaning it washes us. It washes us, cleanses us. Soap, the purpose of soap is to wash us, to clean us. Praise God. So that if you're familiar with laundress soap, it washes clothes. And if it's bathing soap, it washes you. Praise God. So he's using these analogies to show us that his word is to wash us, to purify us. The blood of Jesus, the sacrifice that he made on the cross, is to purify each and every one of us. That when we come out, if a matter of fact, he says in verse 3, that we may be shining in his righteousness. He says in verse 3, he will see it as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi. Now, he was talking about the sons of Levi. The sons of Levi being starting from the Old Testament, praise God. But this word speaks to us today, praise God. Praise the son of living God. We are the new sons of Levi. We are the new children under Christ. Join hairs with Christ seated in heavenly place, places, far above principalities and powers. And that whoever believes in him, we go through that fire and we're purified. Listen to what he says, what he did for the Levites. He said, and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Now, he was speaking of the sons of Levi. He was speaking of uh, uh, the priests, uh, the priests uh, from the priesthood and, and people that served in God, in the temple of God, in the times of old covenant, praise God. In, in the new covenant, now, sealed by the blood of Jesus, we are the temples of the spirit of a living God. And in our hearts dwells God, when you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and he purifies each and every one of us, that when we come out, we may shine in the righteousness, give an offering of righteousness in Christ. Praise God. The righteousness coming from Christ himself, not from our own selves. Praise the Son of living God. I'm hoping somebody's getting the revelation. For our own righteousness, Isaiah 64 verse 6, is as filthy as rags. That's why Jesus Christ had to die on the, to die on the cross. Praise God. He had to die on the cross that we may partake of that righteousness. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we all are healed. And that healing coming from his blood. Praise the Son of living God. It is this that Paul spoke of in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21, that when we come to Christ, we become new creations. All the things pass away. In other words, we are purged of all sin. We are purged of all heaviness in the spirit. We are purged of every unrighteousness. And we partake of the righteousness of God through Christ. And the gift of righteousness, praise God, is eternal life through Christ. Praise the Son of the living God. But the wages of sin is death. Romans 6 verse 23. 
Praise the Son of God. And I'm hoping that you got the revelation. And so going back to our scripture today in Matthew chapter 6, praise God. Looking at the treasures. How do we lay up treasures in heaven? We lay up treasures in heaven by looking to that gold. That gold that is from heaven. By accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. And then he giving us his Holy Spirit to purify us even in fire. Yes, sometimes we've had all these things that we're going through and, and we have the little, little doctrines and we have a little, little things that we grew up in and, and we don't want to let go of some of the, the sins that we have in our hearts, but God will purge each and every one of us. Praise God. Purify us. If we are willing to come with a broken and contrite heart and receive the gift of his Holy Spirit, praise the Son of the living God. He will work in us. And the work that he started in us, for those of you who are believers, he will accomplish to the very end. In the mighty names. And I do believe that whoever is not yet born again, he has started that work in you right now, even as I speak. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the very last. He who is, was, and is to come. Yes, he is coming back for a holy and unblemished church. And you and I must be found to be holy, to be pure. Matthew 5, verse 6, the word of God declares, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. In Matthew 6, 33, uh, somewhere in the scripture we're going to read, praise God, and we're not, we may not, we, I think we've read it before. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Everything else shall be added unto you. In other words, he's saying, let us not put first uh, the, the earthly things, but seek first the kingdom of God. Everything that is of God, the gold that is in heaven. And all these other things he will add unto us. He knows that we need them. He knows that we need clothing. We need food. We need a car. We need a house. He doesn't want us to be miserable. His plans are not of evil, but to prosper us and to give us hope. Jeremiah 23, 23 um, uh, verse, um, nine, um, verse 29, verse 11. Sorry. Praise the Son of living God. He does, his plans are not of evil, but to prosper us and to give us hope. Praise God. Let us go to verse 19. Matthew 6, verse 19. Laying up treasures in heaven. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves, thieves break in and steal. Now listen to that scripture. Listen to this verse. It is very powerful. It says, do not lay up your, for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Now, who are the thieves? Remember, if we... Uh, when we're told in the, uh, the, the scripture whereby Jesus Christ found some uh, uh, Pharisees and the people of Israel that are selling in the temple and selling doves and exchanging money and, you know, exchange of money and uh, selling doves in, in the temple. And, and he was very angry. He turned those tables and said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. Praise God. What was he talking about? I think we told that uh, in today, praise God, God has Send his only begotten son, that his, his son having died on the cross, praise God, now allows us to pray in the spirit. He was talking about praying in the spirit because now we are the temples of the spirit of a living God. But in that time, it was not the way it was supposed to be. Praise God. People were selling and, 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 and were doing all kinds of things in the in temple, which is supposed to be God's house of prayer. Praise God. And as Mafaki said, this is not a den of thieves. The, the temple is not a den of thieves. Here, we compare this uh, scripture of verse 19. Do not lay up yourselves. Now, he's talking to you, the new temple. You are the temple of the Spirit of the living God. Praise God. Unlike the other temple in which there were den of thieves, you are the temple of the Spirit of the living God. Similarly, though, you are not supposed to be housing a den of thieves. A den of thieves being forces of darkness, demonic forces of darkness that lead you to sin, to prostitute yourselves. Those are the thieves. We know that Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. He is the thief. But God sent his only begotten son, and Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, that we may have life, and we may have it more abundantly. Praise the son of the living God. The only way, the truth, and the life. As a matter of fact, in, the, in one of the uh, teachings uh, as a chief shepherd, it says, he who comes by the any other way other than the door is a thief. And so the enemy has come into our hearts, some of us who are struggling with sin, praise God, and that's not good, is that not to praise God about, but what I'm saying, this is the truth, praise God. If you are harboring anything that is not of God inside of you, the enemy crept in through another way and is, is attacking you, praise God. He, he, in other words, you allowed the, 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 the enemy to come in and, and, and to steal you, but if you go through a different doorway, praise God, and that doorway being 
Jesus Christ is son of the living God. He says, I'm the door. Praise God. I am the only way, the truth, and the life. If you are open your hearts, in other words, in Christ, first of all, you open your, 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 your heart to him. He will come in. Praise God. And he is the only way, the truth, and the life that will get you to eternal salvation. I thought, I'm, I'm hoping you've gotten the revelation here. Praise God. So he's saying, do not lay up your treasures. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. So anytime you lay up treasures on earth, in other words, if you're looking at things of the world, if you're looking at the pleasures of sin, if you're looking at the gold of this world, nothing wrong with, with the loving the houses and cars and all that, because God ordains for, that you have it. But how do you acquire them? Praise God. How do you acquire them? How do you get those things? Do you prostitute yourself together? Do you sell your soul? We yesterday read about gaining the, the whole world, but then losing your soul. What goes, good is it for you to gain the whole world, but lose your soul? That is the scripture that we learned of yesterday. So in the same way, he said, do not lay up yourselves treasures on the earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. So if you lay in a treasures here on earth, essentially what he's saying, if you're not protected by the power of the blood of Jesus, if you're not protected, your herd is not protected by Jesus Christ himself, whatever you do, whatever things you immerse, and you're amassing wealth and you have stocks and all these other things and nothing wrong to have those stocks. But how do you acquire them? Do you acquire them through theft, through lying, through, as you see so many things in the news. The other day I was seeing a, a, a woman, a Martha, that was being pardoned and you know what happened with her. So many people are like that, and scams. There are so many, been so many scams on Wall Street. People amassing wealth and trying to amass all this wealth that you're not going to even consume all this wealth. You're not going to use up all this wealth. No need to have like so many houses. And yes, it is good to amass wealth and have things. Yeah. But how do you acquire them is the question. Do you acquire them through corruption? In Africa, there's a lot of corruption. Where I come from, there's a lot of corruption. And even in the police, there's corruption. People are prostituting themselves in the physical, even in the hurt. People are lying. People are doing all kinds of things. So he's saying, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. And yes, when you lay up your treasure on earth and, and you do it the wrong way, there the thief has already stolen. And you know, whatever you must, the enemy is going to take it. The enemy is going to take it. All these things, if anything, all these things, the physical things, they're going to rust. The gold, the cars, they rust. They disappear at one time. Heaven and earth, Jesus Christ said, will pass away. But his word will not perish. His word will not pass away because it is established in heaven and so if you lay up your treasure in heaven and you seek the gold that has been tested by fire from heaven you are assured of greater treasures eternal salvation in christ the joy that is that is unspeakable a peace that is that, that surpasses all understanding a love that transcends all knowledge faith and all the good things that come through christ the, the fruit of the spirit of the living god praise the son of the living god and so he says do not lay up your treasures on earth where more than rust destroy as a matter of fact the wages of sin is death do you know what happens in hell in hell whoever's gone to hell they, they, they say it's a place where there's moth and and they there's 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 uh, uh there's maggots and it stinks and so when you lay up treasures here on earth through stealing through prostituting yourself through pornography through all these other things and there's so many businesses out there people we think about okay the economy is doing well but think about it for a minute and the holy spirit has been dealing with me on some of these things how is your business? Does your business represent Christ? Are you having a business that represents the kingdom of heaven? Think about it for a minute as we pray for our country, for our economy, whatever country you're in, in the world, the world economy, because we, have, we live in a global economy now. What business are you having? And in, is your business glorifying the kingdom of God, glorifying Jesus Christ? So many people who are buzz who have strip clubs, who have uh, uh, um, uh, factories of, of cigarettes, factories that produce uh, wines and, 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 and spirits, and all these things. You're killing the body, the temple of the Spirit of the living God. So he's saying here, yeah, do not lay up you for, up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But if you lay up treasures in a business that is based on a godly principle, that is going to build the kingdom of heaven rather than break it, that is not going to bring killing. How many people die of DUI, drunken, drinking and driving? 
How many people die of, uh, of uh, uh, homosexuality or even sexual immorality, adultery, fornication, selling, prostituting oneself, HIV and AIDS? How many people? And these are things that people don't want to preach, even on the pulpit, but I'm going to speak as it is, because these things are exactly against the kingdom of heaven. And whoever practices them, even in a business, you are promoting the kingdom of the devil rather than the kingdom of heaven. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up, listen to what it says in 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. In heaven, the thieves will not steal. Praise the son of living God. Once you lay up, the, you, you seek that gold that Jesus Christ has asked us to seek from him that has been tested by fire, you're going to have treasures, treasures as has never, never, never been seen here before. That treasure, the greatest treasure, the greatest treasure is to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. In other words, praise the Son of living God. You may be poor here on earth. And the story of Lazarus and the rich man, I think I shared it in this very, uh, uh, in this very forum, teaches us the story of Lazarus and the rich man. The Lazarus who had sores on his body. Lazarus who had nothing in the earthly realm. Lazarus who was looked at as a scam of the earth. Yet this rich man had all the riches in the world. And then Lazarus could come and not even a, a, a little piece of bread was thrown at him. The dogs were licking Lazarus' wounds. And I'm speaking to somebody. Do not lay up your treasures on earth, but in heaven. Praise the Son of the God. Say, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. The enemy does not want that message to come out, but I'm going to speak it in the name of Jesus, that if there's anybody who's been laying up their treasures on earth, in other words, not looking to Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, to provide for them, to protect them, to heal them, to protect everything of theirs, I pray in the name of Jesus that you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you a born again believer, you've been living that way. And we all have so many things. I've been there. I'm still struggling with a number of things. But I pray that each and every one of us are delivered from that evil. Are delivered from that mindset. That we may have a mindset of Christ. That we may wear a full armor of God. That we may look to the things of heaven rather than the things of the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray. Where moth and rust does not destroy. Praise God. Neither moth nor rust destroys. Where thieves do not break in and steal. Because you know what? Because God protects you. Praise the Son of a living God. As a matter of fact, let's go to Psalms 127. Psalm 127. What does Psalm 127 say? For those of you who have houses, praise the Son of a living God. And it's good to lay up, uh, I mean to, to uh, store up and then save and all that. But how you save is what matters this is what god is talking about you know he's saying don't worship money don't worship mama we're going to read the scripture um, um down the road praise god he does not want us to to, to worship mammon rather than god praise god you must choose who you worship you must choose who you worship if you worship mammon if you worship mammon then that is incorrect praise god you must want, not worship the things of uh, um, of, uh, of the world, praise God. Psalms 127 says, Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord girds the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up early, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives, for, for so he gives his beloved sleep. So if you are treasures in heaven, you will have peaceful sleep. Even when you're poor, you'll have a peace that surpasses the love of son, and love of sins on earth. And yes, he will give you the wealth. If you seek him, praise God. All wealth comes from heaven. All wealth comes from God. Praise the Son of a living God. Hallelujah. And that is the message that the enemy does not want us to preach. But it is the truth. So Lazarus, Lazarus, I was speaking of Lazarus. Lazarus went to a better place when he died. The rich man ended up in hell because he put his treasures on earth. He laid up his treasures on earth. And he forgot that the most important thing was that treasure, of the, 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 the wealth that he received was supposed to be shared amongst the poor, amongst those who do not have. 
And that is why God blesses us. If he blesses us, he expects you to share the blessing, to become a blessing to others. Praise the Son of the living God. Here is good news for somebody. Praise God. In Psalm 91, praise God, I love this psalm. It says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are protected. When you have Christ, everything of yours is protected. Even if the enemy tries to steal you, he will not prevail. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You and I, no weapon formed against you and I shall prosper. Any tongue that goes against us will be condemned. For that is the heritage of the servants of the Most High God, the vindication from the Lord God himself in Isaiah 54, verse 17. Praise the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Listen to this. This is King David. A man, he, God said, I found a man after my own heart. He recognized that God is his protection. Praise the Son of the living God. He laid up his treasures in heaven. Praise God. And he says, surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. The snare of the fowler being the devil himself who is always putting up snares and traps for each and every one of us so that we may fall into the deep, fall into the mary pits of clay. But if you are under the shadow of the Almighty, the protection of the Almighty God, the court of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you will be protected beyond reasonable doubt. If you have Jesus Christ as the only way, the truth, and life, your personal Lord and Savior, Praise the Son of Living God. You are protected from every kind of thief. That thief, that old serpent called the devil, who came to steal, kill, and destroy, will not take you. The second death and Hades cannot overcome you because you have life in Christ. Praise the Son of the Living God. But if you put all the, your treasures here on earth, not in heaven, we here, moth and rust eats, but in heaven, moth and rust does not eat. When you put up your treasures, you end up like the rich man who went to hell. We are more than these moths, maggots and stuff. But Lazarus, who did not lay up his treasures, I would like to believe that he was a good man, even though he was poor on earth, he ended up in heaven. Now, I'm not teaching the, 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 the prosperity of poverty, <laughs> rather the, the, the gospel of poverty. There's the gospel of prosperity and the gospel of poverty. I'm not teaching because there are people who preach the gospel of prosperity and teach it to the extreme. And there are all those people who take up the vow of poverty. God does not want us to be poor. And yes, Lazarus, the soul of Lazarus teaches us. And he went through his suffering. God didn't want him to suffer, but he ended up in a better place. Most importantly, you must, even when it comes to suffering, because yes, there are going to be times when there's going to be some times of trials and tribulations and persecutions, and you're going to go through some situations. But no matter what you're going through, be like Job. Job went through the same situation as Lazarus. Job soars on his, 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 his the entire body. He lost his wife. He lost his family. As a matter of fact, his wife told him to curse God. And when he saw sores and everything, he, she said, God has forsaken you. Just curse him and, and die. But I'm here to tell you, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. Do not curse God, but seek him. Because under the shadow of the Almighty, you are protected. Under Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, you are protected. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. That even death cannot overcome you. The death here on earth is what we are talking about. The death here on earth, even if you, you die here on earth, in other words, praise God, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They don't love their lives until death. So even if you die here on earth, the second death is not going to overcome you. So we, whether it means to die here on earth, praise God, in other words, that's what I meant, praise God, you're, you're assured of eternal life in Christ. The second death and Hades cannot overcome you if you have Christ in you. Praise the Son of living God. I'm hoping somebody's got the message. Praise God. Another, the second death cannot overcome you. Praise God. The second death which Jesus Christ overcame when he died on the cross, was buried, and he rose from the dead by the power of the Spirit of the living God. Praise the Son of living God. You are assured of eternal life. Lazarus went to a better place. I don't know why I keep saying Lazarus because I'm telling, I'm speaking to somebody who's putting their, their, their whole mind on the things of the earth, money and everything, and, and worrying about money. And as a matter of fact, if you read them from 25, you talk about worrying and worrying. People worry about things of the world and, and, and how am I going to survive? I don't worry about those things. When I'm in here, yes, I go through situations. I say, okay, Lord, this is here. It is a situation, and I am in a tight situation. But I know that at the end of the day, I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. 
the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords shall overcome. Praise the Son of Living God. Every situation that I'm going through. So let us go to 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there your herd will be. So in other words, if your treasure is in the things of the world, if your treasure is in monetary things and you're thinking about money, how am I going to make money? I have friends, I have family that have put all their mind on money and, and some of them are, are not, you know, well. And I, I don't mean this to say it in a mean way, but I'm just telling you that money is nothing. Money is nothing. Don't put your treasure in money. I'm not saying it's nothing. It helps. It helps you have money. Of course you have to have money. But don't put all your hopes in money and forget about God. Praise the Son of living God. So 22, and 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart is. So if you put your treasure in money, and, and even to the extent of not paying tithes, I'm going to speak to somebody who doesn't tithe. People who don't tithe, who don't give into the work of God, and you're in the church, or you're, you're serving in uh, some place, praise God, in some ministry, you're, you're stingy with your money. You don't want to pay money to, to or rather give out gifts and your clothes, your old clothes, or even new clothes to people that don't have. You have so many clothes in your closet. You have so many things that you have. You're, in this society, people amass things more than people want or need. You amass so many cars. You have five cars. You have seven houses. You have all this wealth, but yet you cannot even pay tithe. So that people, they, 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 so that there may be food in in uh, uh, in, in our Father's house, so there may be food in His house, His house being the church. Praise God. So that people who are poor, who are impoverished, like Lazarus, may have food. People who do not have clothing, who do not have something to eat. There are so many people dying of poverty and starvation in Africa, in India, in in, in, in the streets of 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 of, of, of uh, uh, Bangladesh, in the streets of, of uh, Calcutta. They, they, there are so many people in South Africa that need food. There are so many people in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique that need food. There are people even in Russia, in America here, so many people that are homeless. Now, I'm talking about physical things, but yet even in the spirit, you may be giving, doing all those things, but are you doing them out of the abundance of your heart? Out of the abundance of your heart, meaning that are you doing them out of love? Or are you doing them? Some people, I've, I've, I've heard of people, movie stars, they give in to this and they want to promote their 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 their, their, their movie <laughs> to show that, oh, you know, I'm a, I, I give I give out a few things. And then, you know, they, 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 they in other words, they're, they're looking to, 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 to win the hearts of their fans so that they go watch their movies. Oh, he's a good man. He's got a, he's, a, he's into this cause and this cause and this cause. And that is good to be into that cause. But the question is, are you doing it for monetary gain? Because ultimately, you see that that person is doing it so that he wins funds, so that he makes more and more money. And yes, he's giving back to society. And I've, I love companies, companies that have a corporate responsibility. I studied all these things in school. Companies that have corporate responsibility and they give back to the community. That is all good. But do you do it to promote yourself? Is it for your own selfish ambition or is it for the good of the people that you're giving it to. Is it out of the burdens of your heart through the kingdom of heaven, following the kingdom of heaven principle, love rather than promoting self? Love does not promote self. We can teach, that's a whole teaching about love. Love is not ambitious, self-ambitious. Love is not proud. Love does not, that does not a pride in, its, in itself. Love God is love. God is love. Praise God. That is an example of love. God gave to us unconditionally. For he so loved the world without nothing that we did to gain that love, unmerited favor we received, that he sent his only begotten son, that none should perish, but may, we may have eternal salvation through Christ. Praise the son of living God. And we must pray for that love. And that love comes through the power of the spirit of the living God. May God bless you abundantly. If you've received that message, praise God. Listen to Proverbs 631. The word of God declares, if a thief steals, he must pay sevenfold. And yes, some of you have been doing the right thing and this thief continues to steal. Maybe because of a mistake that your great grandfathers did. Maybe because of ancestral curses, generational curses. I, we can break those curses with the blood of Jesus. And I break them by the power of the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I proclaim it. Listen to verse 22. I'm going to go to um, 
to a different topic, but it's slightly related. It says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. It's really talking about the same thing is that, that, that your eyes and, 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 and what you see, where, where, you, where your eyes are. Are you looking to the things of the world? Are you looking to the things of heaven? And this is related to Proverbs. <laughs> It's interesting because it gold and then seek I serve that is that, that, that your eyes may see. I serve in other words, your eyes must be through the eyes of the spirit of a living God. And the, 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 if you have the, the eyes that are through the spirit of a living God, you're going to be able to see things in the realm of the spirit by the power of the spirit of living God. You're going to see them as God sees them. Praise the Son of Living God. You're not going to view the world as 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 as, as uh, um, the world views it, because when you are in the kingdom of heaven, you do not walk according to the world. Even though you are in the world, you do not walk according to the world. Praise the Son of Living God. For our weapons are not carnal in nature, but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds, casting down every every I think that exalts itself above God and every high imagination. Praise God, bringing every thought captive and obedient to Christ. So you will look and view. Think the way God thinks. You'll have a mind of Christ. You start to think about things and how does this promote the kingdom of God? How am I going to be useful in this place? How am I going to promote the kingdom of God in this position? And I'm speaking to people who are in corporate. Praise God. My audience is, is varied. Praise God. If you are a corporate person, how are you going to view what you do? Does it glorify God? Does the company you represent glorify God? And some of you uh, may be working in uh, uh, corporate companies that sell beer, Coors Light, I don't know, Budweiser, and cigarette companies. I don't see so many cigarette companies in this country. Uh, and, and I love it that uh, they ban the, 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 uh, the uh, advertising of cigarettes because it promotes cancer. But think about it for a minute. Beer and all the spirits, they, they kill liver, the liver, liver disease, drink, cause of death. Number one cause of death here in Texas, in, in Lubbock, Texas, and in elsewhere, is a lot of deaths as a result of drinking and driving. A lot of health-related issues. I used to drink, so I know that I have related issues. Obesity it brings a whole lot of things, things that, 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 that are contrary to the kingdom of God. Praise God. And so the lamp of the body is the eye. If there are for your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So if you start to view things in the realm of the spirit, Praise God. You'll view things in the light of God's word. In every darkness, you would want to bring light to that darkness. Praise the Son of Living God. He says, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. This is exactly what it means. If there are for the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So in other words, he's using this as a kind of like a, <laughs> to provoke that if you have, your, your light is darkness, then obviously you don't have light. You're going to be walking in darkness. Praise the Son of Living God. In Matthew 5, 16 to 18, he's called us to be the sword and light of the world. Those that are believers will be sword and, the sword and the light of the world that shines into the darkness. And that light starts from within us. So from within us, there must be light in order for us to be able to shine a light into the darkness. But if it is darkness that is in you, if it is it is sin and, 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 and unforgiveness and hatred and, and all these other things, cursing, that is what will come out of your heart. It is this that he said, for where the treasure is, there, there your heart is. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Praise God. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So let us, listen to verse 24. 24 is very, very powerful. Praise God. Verse 24 is very powerful. It says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. You cannot serve the world and serve God. You must choose. You cannot serve mammon, if I think it says it here, or else you will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is, is a spirit of, of money, a spirit of money. It represents money. People that worship money, they worship uh, 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 money and immersing wealth and wealth and wealth and wealth and wealth. You cannot choose, you cannot eat from the table of the Lord. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 10, 21, the word of God declares, you cannot eat from the table of the Lord and eat from the table of demons. So if you're worshiping the spirit of mammon, you're eating from the table of demons. If you're worshiping God, you must worship God. Praise God. With a broken and contrite heart, with humility, with faith, and with love, with provision, protection, and healing that comes from God, submitting everything that you have, your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable of the Lord, and not being conformed to this world, as Paul says in Romans 12, 1 to 2, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind of your mind, so that you may know that which is the perfect will of God. Praise the Son of the Living God. 
Hallelujah, somebody. So he says in 1 Corinthians 10 21, and I just quoted that, praise God. You cannot eat from the table of the Lord and eat from the table of demons. You cannot share the cup of the Lord and then share the cup of demons. You can't be you cannot be half half. That is lukewarm. In the lukewarm church, Jesus Christ talks about that. Praise God in the book of Revelation. You cannot be lukewarm. You either are for God or you are for Satan. You either under the father of truth or under the father of lies, who is the devil who came to steal, kill, and destroy. Praise the Son of the living God. You cannot be half half. So you cannot say, I'm, I'm a born again believer, and then now I'm going to serve this company. I'm going to look for this company called uh, Kua's Light. I'm going to work for Kua's Light. I'm going to work for a tobacco company, BAT, or whatever company that uh, Embassy, or any of that. I don't, I don't even remember. I used to smoke, by the way, way back, and God delivered me from that. But there's so many things. Smoking, for example, smoking brings cancer. Drinking brings. Uh, you cannot be involved in something that is contrary to the kingdom of heaven. So you cannot serve mammon. And people do it for money. They sell their souls for money. So you cannot serve mammon and serve God at the same time. You cannot share the table of the Lord and the table of demons. You must choose who to serve. Praise the Son of Lincoln. That is how we walk. And it is tough. Yes, it is a tough walk. And so many times I have been into places and businesses and the Holy Spirit is showing me that certain things are contrary to the kingdom of heaven and of course you have to pray for them but you cannot just say oh I'm gonna walk for to it go and walk in a strip club even though I'm born again believer you're not gonna you can lie but that's a lie because you're going you, you you're really promoting the devil right there you cannot say that you're promoting the kingdom of heaven so if you are someone who's doing that you get out of that praise God you get out of there as fast as you can praise God I'm going to take you to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1 to 18. Praise God. 2 Corinthians. Actually, before we do that, let's go to John. I'm about to close in a few. The book of John. If you have your Bibles with you. John, chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. And why I brought this is um, primary uh, because uh, the book of John 1, 1 to 5 speaks about Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise God who is the word of God that purifies our hearts, that helps us be grounded into focusing to the things of heaven, the treasures in heaven rather than the treasures of the world. It's focusing on the gold in heaven that has been tested by fire, which we we heard the word of God is like a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. The word of God is like a fire. Praise God, Jeremiah 20, 29, and a hammer that crushes rocks into pieces. So the word of God is Christ himself. The word of God is not simply just a word. He's living, Christ living in and through us. Praise God. The sword of the spirit too, by the power of the spirit. But what makes the word of God alive is the spirit of God. Praise the son of the living God. That's why we must not read this Bible just like any other literature book or any other historical book or the things that happen here as history. But living, it is living. In other words, the word of God brings healing there and then if you believe in it and stand on it. Praise God. If you build your foundation on it, if you build your foundation on Christ, praise the Son of living God. So he says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Christ was with God. The Son of living God, the Spirit of God, and the Father were one in the beginning when the word was created. Listen to this verse 11. He says, all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Everything. Think about the trees. So if you start to glorify the things, you, you're glorifying creatures rather than the creator himself. If you glorify money or the gold of this world, the, 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 houses, the houses that are built from the clay which God created, everything was created. Nothing, he says here, all things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Praise the Son of living God. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm hoping somebody's got the revelation. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The darkness he was talking about at the time, even in these times, were people who rejected him. Even his own people, the Jewish people that rejected him. But thank God, God said that they will be saved. Paul talks about it in Romans 11 that the Jewish people will be saved. And I'm praying for every Jewish friend of mine that you will be saved. If you're not yet born again, like Paul was transformed from Saul of Tarsus, was persecuting the church at the time. This is not anti-Semitic. This is the truth. God wants people to be transformed. God wants people to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, both Jew and Gentile, that we may all be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. 
It says, and light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Genesis 1, verse 3, verse 4, to 4. It talks about the light. And they, in, the, in the beginning, when God said, let there be light, and there was light. So he was there in the beginning. The Son of God brought light. The Word of God brought light. Psalm, Psalms 107, verse 20, where it says, Saint, my word, and it healed you, and it, 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 it saved you from your destruction. Psalms 107, verse 20. The word of God that came down from heaven became flesh, dwelt among us, dwelt among the Israelites at the time. Do not compare him. Even today, he's within us. He's within us, not like physical, but in the realm of the spirit. He's going to return. There's a time when he'll return, but he dwells in each and every believer. And when we speak his word, praise God, please listen, because we speak of the truth. We speak of the truth that should set you free. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Praise the Son of the living God. I'm not Jesus Christ myself, but I know that Jesus Christ uses me, praise God, to preach his gospel. So don't ever, ever, anybody take the glory of God. There's so many people out there that I've heard calling themselves Jesus. And he said, there'll be so many false prophets that call themselves Jesus. Or oh, we've seen Jesus here. We've seen Jesus there. Don't believe them. Praise the Son of the living God. But believe in his word, his truth, and you will be saved in the mighty name of jesus that is the gospel that is the gospel the truth of the gospel here's a closing a closing for each and every one of us praise god everyone that is a believer everyone that believes in jesus christ as your personal lord and savior and if you don't please accept jesus christ as your personal lord and savior for the time is running out he is returning soon he's coming back soon he's coming back for a holy and unblemished church and each and every one of us must accept him as our personal lord and savior in order to partake of eternal salvation eternal life in heaven praise god now we don't receive him just to go to heaven to ex escape hell <laughs> the man of god recently uh, was teaching and says some people accept jesus christ uh, just to use him as as a, as, a, as a fire escape a fire escape if you know if there's a fire you want to escape that fire and then you, you accept for the sake of escaping the fire but we accept him because he loved us praise god he loved us first praise god and we do it one for once we accept him, we do it to do his kingdom, to do his will. Let our food be due to do the will of he that sent us. Praise God. By accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, you commit to serving him, not simply to escape hell, but rather to serve him that others may be brought to salvation. Praise the Son of the living God. Hallelujah, somebody. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse, I'm going to start from uh, uh, verse 1. And I'm going to read very fast in the interest of time. Praise God. And I know we started late. Praise God. But this is this is the gospel. And this is uh, um, uh, the, the, the hope that we have in Christ. The hope that those that believe have in Christ. Praise God. Praise the Son of living God. He says, therefore, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. If you're there, please say amen. Therefore, since we have this ministry, and we have this ministry of reconciliation, reconciliation of souls to Christ, just as Christ reconciled us to Christ, praise God, he uses us. Now, not us reconciling, but we being used by him, praise God, by the power of his spirit to reconcile all his people to him. Praise the son of living God. Through him that they may be reconciled to Christ. Praise God. Through us in him to Christ. Praise God. Here is the word of God. Therefore, since we have this ministry, and each and every one of us have a ministry, he may have been called to be a pastor, a teacher of the word, an apostle, an evangelist, a prophet of God, or even a businessman, and your business is going to, to prosper. It's going to prosper the kingdom of heaven. God wants you to prosper. His plans are not of evil, but are prosperous. But you must do it the kingdom way, the kingdom of heaven way. Praise God. So he says, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose hurt. Praise God. And this is to somebody who is going through some kind of tribulation, maybe in your business, and maybe in your personal life, in your family life, in your marriage life. And I pray that you are delivered from anything that you're going through. But whatever you're going through, don't lose heart. This is what God, um, God using Paul, who was Saul of Tarsus formerly, praise God, now re re transformed by the renewing of the mind through the word of God, praise God, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, the spirit of God, he using him mighty in mighty ways. And here we are. Listen to this very powerful word. Word of God from Paul, who was used by the Holy Spirit, transformed now. He's saying, therefore, since we have this ministry, we have received mercy. We do not lose hurt, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, praise God, hidden things of shame, the hidden things of shame. We've renounced them. We've renounced 
perversion. We renounce pornography. We renounce anything that is not of God. We renounce sinfulness. We renounce anything to do with the devil. It says, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness. Listen to the word. For somebody who's still walking in craftiness, you must renounce him. You must repent of that and come to Christ. The marvelous light, he who's willing to come the marvelous light, shall be washed by the blood of Jesus and shall receive the mercy of God and receive salvation through Christ. Praise God. So he says, but we have renounced the hidden things of, of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. So you should not handle the word of God deceitfully, but Tell the truth, praise the Son of the living God. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Praise the Son of the living God. Praise the Son of the living God. The verse 3 says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. And so there are some people who will, who's, the, the, who the gospel will be veiled, veiled, whose eyes will not, uh, who, who, who properly, who the devil has blinded them. And that's why Christ speaks of us seeking eyes out. And if you're, that person is blinded, it's, Ask God to reveal the truth to you. I seek I self that you may see. Praise God. I'm speaking to somebody. Praise God. But yes, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. So to those who are perishing, it is veiled. Whose minds the God of his age. And the God of his age, we know who the God of his age. The God of his age is the devil himself. That old serpent called the devil, who was thrown like lightning from heaven. And now with his demonic angels, they walk around as demonic forces of darkness, principalities and powers in heavenly places. But I'm here to tell you some good news because of who you accepted if you are a believer. Greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. Praise the Son of the living God. And he that started a work in you, that's the Spirit of God when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He that started a work in you will accomplish it to the very end until the return of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, whose minds the God of his age has blinded who do not believe. So in other words, if you do not believe, in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, your mind has been blinded by the God of his age. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ, Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your born servants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, the Son of living God. Hallelujah. Who was there in the beginning? The word that was with God, the word that was God. All things created through him, without which none was created. Praise the Son of the living God. Hallelujah, somebody. So he says in verse 6, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now here's hope to somebody. But we have this treasure in Athen Bessos, you and I, who are believers, have this treasure, and that treasure is the gold that is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. None of us can boast, praise God. We cannot boast of what we, I cannot boast of what I do, except by the power of the Spirit of the living God. I cannot boast of the things that I say, except by the power of the Spirit of the living God, by the power of the blood of Jesus. It says, but we have this stranger in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed. And for some of you who are going through a tough situation, Jesus Christ said, yes, there will be persecution. But no matter what you're going through, stand firm on the word of the Lord. Just as he was persecuted, we will be persecuted. But stand firm. How you respond to that persecution if you don't give up. If you don't give up and stand firm. So the word of God says in Isaiah 40 verse 31, praise the Son of the living God. Those that wait upon the Lord shall be strengthened. They shall sow on the wings like an eagle. Run and not grow weary. Walk or not get tired. In other words, if you wait on the Lord, you shall run and not grow weary. Walk or not get tired. If you, even if you're going through a persecution, as long as you stand firm on the word of the Lord, God will get you through by his power, by the treasure. That uh, treasure in earthen vessels as a temple of the spirit of the living God. The Spirit of the Living God walking in and through you to bring you through, you and I to bring us through. It says in verse 8, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. God has not forsaken you, whatever persecution you're going through. Struck down, but not destroyed. And yes, the word of God declares in reverence of them, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. They do not love their lives even unto death. I say that very often because I can tell you that there will be situations whereby your life will be put to the test. But if you stand firm and proclaim those things that are of Christ, 
those things that are not as though they are. In other words, the things of the spirit that cannot be seen by human eyes. The things of the spirit that can only be revealed by God. Praise the Son of the living God. And stand firm on the word of the Lord. And call upon the Holy Spirit to get you through. You shall overcome. Praise the Son of the living God. And he said, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus and the life of Jesus also may be, that the life of Jesus Christ also may be manifested in our body. Praise God. That is what it means to be crucified, to crucify the flesh, praise God, with Christ, to become dead to sin and alive in Christ, to crucify every sinful desires, to present your body as a living sacrifice. Every day that you do that, you carry about the life of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. In other words, you carry about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ and the life of Jesus Christ also, that the life of Jesus Christ also may be manifested in the body. So he died to sin. He who was sinless took on our sin that we may be sinless. Praise God. The same way we must submit every sin to him, praise God, on the cross. As we carry our cross, we say, Jesus Christ has got it. Lay everything, all your treasures in heaven. Praise God. That is what it means. Praise God. And then as you walk, you become dead to sin and you become alive in Christ on a daily basis, on a daily basis. He takes us, uh, he takes away those burdens, those burdens off of our hearts, those burdens off of our hearts. Praise God. That's what he said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Praise God. Come to me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. The rest coming from him and him alone. Praise God. His burden is light. His yoke is easy. So whatever cross you carry, if you carry it in Christ, it is going to be easy. That even if they try to persecute you. Even if the enemy attacks you, throws the kitchen sink, so to speak, in the realm of his spirit, you will stand firm. Praise the Son of living God. That even though you're going to be persecuted, you will know that you're not forsaken because you have a mighty God who promised in Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 2, he will never let the fire devour you. He will never let the, the floods overtake you. Praise the Son of living God. Here he says in 11, For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Praise the Son of living God. Job, Job in the Old Testament, he had to take the sores, he had to take the losing money. He went through everything, not because he was sinful, not because he was a sinner. He was a righteous man by all accounts. The righteous is not coming from him, but looking to Christ. Praise the God. Praise the Son of the living God. Look into God, the Alpha, Heavenly Father. Yes, somebody may ask, was Jesus Christ there in the Old Testament? Yes, he was. Now, not in the flesh. Praise God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not preaching heresy. Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Jesus Christ was there in the fire with Abednego, Meshach, and Shadrach. Jesus Christ was there in the lion's den with the man of God, Prophet Daniel, Jesus Christ was there with Malachi, was there with Moses. He was there in the beginning. He was with God. He was God. The son of a living God that came to die for against our sins. He accomplished that which he did. And now whoever believes in him has eternal life. And because he lives, we live also. Praise the son of a living God. In 12, he says, So then death is working in us, but life in you. As I preach the gospel, yes, the enemy attacks me, and I don't care because I know that somebody is going to be saved. Somebody is going to be delivered because of this message. Because I know that the spirit of the living God is going to work in each and every one. Praise the Son of the living God. And I become dead to sin. I die to self. Praise the Son of the living God. I, I submit everything to Christ. Praise the Son of the living God. I present my body as a living sacrifice. Same thing that you should do in order to be able to make it in this world. In, in order to make it to the next world. Praise God. In other words, as you walk in this world, you trump upon, trump and, um, upon serpents and scorpions. So that when Christ returns, praise the Son of the living God. He will receive you in his kingdom. Praise the Son of the living God. So then death is working in us, he says, but life is in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Praise the Son of the living God. For all things are for your sakes that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Everything to be done for the glory of God, not for the glory of man. Nobody should glory in what they do, but the glory 
and honor belongs to Christ and Christ alone, to our Father in heaven, to the Spirit of the living God that does what in and through us. Praise the Son of heaven. But listen to this, and I'm going to close. Therefore, we do not lose hurt, even though our outward man is perishing. So, so in other words, our outward man is perishing. Perishing, in other words, don't give up to the flesh. The, the outward man, yes, he can perish. He can be killed. This body is going to go back to dust, from dust to dust. Okay? Don't satisfy the flesh, in other words. Don't satisfy, satisfy the pleasures of the flesh and give up on the things of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit which are permanent. And as a matter of fact, that is what he says here. He says, therefore, we do not lose her, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man, because remember, you are a spiritual being in a human body. This body is going to rot, yes, ultimately it will be raised up when Christ returns, praise God. But if you're not seen just to satisfy the pleasures of the flesh, rather, you should feed your inner man with the food of the spirit, the spirit of food, which is the word of God, praise God, so that your inward man will become alive and alive and alive and alive and alive. He says, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Your soul and your spirit are being renewed day by day, no matter what the devil does. He says, for our light affliction, in the light affliction of the world, it is but temporary, he says, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, that eternal weight of glory coming through Christ, the Son of a living God. Hallelujah, somebody. Verse 18 says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, praise God, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Praise the Son of the living God. And walking by faith, even though you don't see the things, you believe because he who has saved them is faithful. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, his word is faithful. His word does not return void. You may not see him, you may not physically see him, but he is very real. He created you and I. Praise the Son of the living God. He created us. He created our innermost being. He created our spiritual being. Praise the Son of the living God. Even created the body. Before we were even formed in our mother's womb, he saw us. In our mother's wombs, he knit us. He, he made us. He formed us. Think about how the baby grows in the stomach. No science can really recreate the organs. I, I know they have this. A lot of things they're doing, doing uh, I don't know, things to get uh, body parts recreated from, from, uh, from pigs and all that. And that is all, to me, it's all right. I'm just going to say it. And I, I love science, but sometimes science goes awry. Awry in the sense that it goes against the kingdom of God. People that commit abortion, suicide, a physician assisted suicide, and I understand people may be going through pain. But here he's saying, this scripture, this very scripture is saying, and some of the things I'm saying are very unconventional to you, but yet the Spirit of God is making me say these things because I have to say it, and it is the truth. He's saying that even to the point of death, don't give up. Whatever you're going through, whatever pain, because think about it for a minute. Committing suicide is simply killing one, one, oneself, killing one seven, oneself. If you kill oneself, that is against the kingdom of heaven. That is my view. No matter what pain you're going through, abortion is killing a baby. No matter what you're going through. So many kids, whether they've been through um, uh, 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 raping, and I, I, I don't castigate, rather I don't, um, sorry, wrong word. I don't, um, I believe in rape. I don't really uh, um, condone, that's what I wanted to look to you, sorry. I don't condone rape. I don't like rape. I castigate rapists. I hate rapists. Not hate them as in I hate the human being, but I hate those people that, I hate the, the, the act of raping, in other words. Let me say, praise God. But no matter what you go through, whether it's through rape that you've got a child, abortion of any kind, killing, it is just as good as any other sacrifice of children. There are people that sacrifice little babies on the altars of the devil just to make money. Can you imagine? People that are killing in my country, there are people, this is the story of people killing people and, and getting their body organs to sell them to, 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 for, for medical purposes. And this is medi medicine gone awry. Leading people to, to get other people's body body organs. You, you, you think that, oh, you received a body organ and you, you, it has been donated. Yes, yet it has been bought in Saudi Arabia. I understand they do those kinds of things. And there is evil. People are killing others to get body organs so that other people may live. You receive a liver that has been from the mud of somebody else. You receive some. These things, are, are they're, they're going on. They're going on. 
and, 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 I, and I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't understand what is going on in the world today, but so many things are going on. The sacrifice of children, human sacrifice. Whatever happens, brother, sister, submit your heart to God. Submit your soul to Christ. Don't prostitute yourself to the devil. Submit your heart to God. It says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Let's pray for those people that are doing those things. And I'm talking to people that I know that may not be doing those things. But you may be in countries whereby they practice those kinds of things. Strange practices that you don't understand. Witchcraft of, of kinds. People cutting off people's heads and taking them to shrines. And people doing all kinds of things. We read them in the stories. I don't ask me to. I don't have any evidence. I read them in the stories. And these are based on fact. These are based on the fact of the stories, in other words. That's my fact right there. Look them up. It's everywhere. People that sacrifice children. And people who buy hair, people, for those ladies who do uh, their hairs and like to buy hair, human hair. In India, I understand people, they, 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 they take their hair to sacrifice them in some temples and, 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 and believing that whatever demonic things that are going on in their lives are going to go into that sacrifice and then now you buy that hair in a in a, in a salon and you don't know what you're putting on your head i'm not scaring anybody but look up those things it is strange things that are going on in the world today so many things that you do not even understand and it is spiritual in nature but the weapons that we fight with as born again believers are not carnal in nature, but they're mighty for pulling down strongholds, 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 and every high thing, casting down every imagine and every high thing that exalts itself above God. Those things exalt themselves above God, bringing every thought captive and obedient to Christ, standing from the word of love, wearing the full armor of God, and fighting those principalities and powers that are leading people to do strange things in this world today. So, listen to what he says in verse 18 while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise God. Now, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. And you and I ought to accept Jesus Christ as a personal and Savior, that we may make it to the kingdom of heaven. But anybody that is practicing anything that is contrary to the kingdom of God, voodoo and things like that, witchcraft, all kinds of things that are strange in this world, please take heed. Take heed and let's pray for one another that God may bring deliverance to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now may God bless you abundantly. I know it's been a tough topic, tough things, but I'm just doing a comparison of the difference between seeking the things of God, in other words, the treasures in heaven versus earthly treasures. You can see that earthly treasures, people do all kinds of things to gain earthly treasures. And that is where the difference is between a born again believer and a non believer. May God bless you abundantly. I'm going to pray for somebody. Whoever needs prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and I break every demonic bondage, every principality and power, any kind of ancestral curses, generational curses. Maybe your fathers, your great grandfathers that have been doing those things. And they're, 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 over the years, you have these curses that you don't even understand. You're a born again believer. You're going through situations that you do not understand because of what your fathers did. They sacrificed to gods. They did all manner of worship of false gods. They, 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 even in traditional religion and religiosity and you have a spirit of religion that is over you you don't understand what is going on in life you don't understand why you're not blessed you don't understand why you have curses or why you are promiscuous why you because maybe your father was promiscuous your great-grandfather was promiscuous those curses can be broken it is why jesus christ died on the cross when he died on the cross he took on all the curses he wore the crown of thorns, that those curses that were cast from the times of Adam when he was cursed to seek food and in that food and toil in thorns and those curses he wore. He took on our curses that we may wear a crown of glory. He took those nails in the hands that we may forever be rich, rich with the gold that is from heaven. He was wounded for our transgressions, the stripes that he took. They heal us, they bring healing in our lives and those nails that were nailed in his in his feet that we may walk in peace that we may walk in abundance that we may have abundance in our hands and we may walk in peace while the way we may have a love that transcends all knowledge a peace that suppresses all understanding that we may wear the full armor of god and that we may have eternal salvation through christ in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm here to speak blessings over somebody. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one at the sound of my voice. I decree and declare that we shall overcome. We have overcome by the power of the blood of Jesus right now, even as I speak. 
Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And faith is the substance of hope and the evidence of things unseen. So we decree now that we have overcome any spirit of evil, spirit of antichrist that is fighting each and every one. Let it be broken right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega. Any curse, any spirit of sexual perversion and immorality, it is being broken right now in the name of Jesus. Any spirit of poverty and debt, lack, let it be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Any ancestral and generational curses, they are being broken right now by the power of the blood of Jesus and they overcame him by the blood of a lamb by the word of their testimony that testimony being that Jesus Christ is the only way the truth and the life the bread of life for the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy so be it I prophesy over every dead born and decree and declare that we shall not die but live to proclaim the works of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody say amen may God bless you abundantly and I hope that somebody's been delivered God bless you in the name of Jesus